Hi, I'm Holly Morrison with the Goshen Team. Welcome back to my kitchen. We are going to make a bone broth soup. Uh, we've had lots of lovely comments on our bone broth video and we've had people asking for recipes for soup. So I almost always make a pot of soup out of my bone broth. So here we are in my kitchen with one of my family's very favorite recipes and we're going to make a chicken and rice soup out of bone broth. So thank you for joining us and let's get started. get our celery prepped and get it in the pot so we can start cooking. This is the one item for the soup that takes the longest. Um, and actually we're talking about bone broth and we have a bone broth video of how to make bone broth. In the back corner over here, we have um, a pot of bone broth that's been going for 24 hours and it is almost ready to pull, but we're gonna go ahead and get the celery prepped and I recommend using a sharp knife. I have already washed this thoroughly for us as you can see, it's pretty wet. Um, I am. I like to do really shortcut things. It is thoroughly washed, and I used my sprayer to get it all clean. As you can see, um, I'm going to take the ends off. Going to save that to put in a Ziploc bag for a future pot of bone broth. And now I'm going to start chopping. Sharp knife, really important. Fingers out of the way, and yes, I'm chopping the whole head at the same time. And you want them thin. Uh, my husband likes to cut cards all the time and he says thin to win. Celery, you do not want to make big giant chunks because it takes a while for it to cook. Now we are going to put the celery into my soup pot. I'm just adding a couple of cups of clean water that I've gotten from my Berkey water filter. Um, there's plenty of water filters out there. I like this one. I've had people ask me what is a Berkey and I'm like ah, I forget. So that is a great water filter. It takes out all kinds of junk and it leaves the minerals. So we've got a couple cups of clean water. I'm going to keep prepping and we're going to put all of the celery. So I always do the biggest head that I bought and this is organic celery. You can get it at lots of grocery stores. My two favorite grocery stores uh, beside, I like Whole Foods, but as people jokingly say, it is Whole Paycheck. Um, it can go there. So I have a very tight list when I go to Whole Foods. But I do go to Whole Foods because there's some things that I can only get there. So here is our organic celery going in. Now when I get down to the bottom, this is just something I have developed over time. I did own a restaurant briefly. Um, it did not close because it wasn't doing well. It closed because the Lord moved us to Kansas City. So now this is what I'm going to do to tackle these bigger pieces. And the end is lovingly holding it for me. So these are holly tricks. You probably will not find them anywhere on the internet because I've never seen anybody do this before. Now one of my favorite chefs, um, besides my grandfather, was Jamie Oliver. And I did learn a lot of amazing things from both of them, but not this one. And the nice thing is we're gonna simmer this the whole time we're doing everything else. So that's why we start with the celery. Obviously I started yesterday making the bone broth. But like I said, watch our bone broth video. And when we get closer, like when you get to this, you're gonna put your fingers back. And you'll see that on all kinds of cooking shows. But you're putting your fingers back because I don't wanna put any blood in my soup. I want it to be delicious. So you're just curling it back as you get closer with the knife. And as the knife gets closer, your knuckles are gonna be the only thing that's coming anywhere near that knife. And as you can see, we've got a lot of celery. And as this simmers down, it's going to just kind of disappear. You're not even gonna notice the celery's in there. Now, if you make big giant chunks, it will not disappear. And you're gonna to have to really be careful to cook it a really long time. So here's all of our celery going in. And I think we got most of it in the pot, not too much on the counter. All right, and I'm probably gonna add a little bit more water at this point. Usually I'm adding bone broth, but you don't wanna simmer your bone broth pretty high because it damages your collagen. So here we go. So once that cooks down a little bit, the next thing I'm gonna to add to this pot will be our bone broth from a crock pot. And then our last batch, last bit of bone broth that came from the first cooking. So when we cook chicken, and for about six hours in the crock pot on low, the broth you're pulling off, that is bone broth too. And actually that will probably be the most gelatinous of your bone broth. 
Um, then when you cook it the second time, it's still going to be gelatinous. It just won't be as much. There are lots of people telling me about using chicken feet. I did that in the beginning and my family would not eat the soup. And after I did all that love and nobody ate the soup, I was like super disappointed. But it has a really odd flavor. And I have done all the tricks to help those chicken feet not taste like chicken feet. But I own chickens and I know where those feet have been and I understand why those feet are kind of gross. <laughs> so anyway, I get gelatin any way I can that's healthy and clean and delicious. And if we don't get the delicious, there's just picky people in this house and they won't go for it. So we're gonna go put this on the stove. We have our celery in some clean water going on the back burner on high. It's gonna stay on high um, because we want that celery to get really tender and fall apart and that's celery and chicken soup are like best friends so that's my favorite way to get celery in your soup and I mean I love the flavor but I do not like to bite into a really al dente piece of celery so this is how this is my trick I've been doing this for a long time of making sure and sometimes celery can come from the store and it can be tougher and it could just be that it's coming you know being harvested during the July and it's like really hot so it's just tougher sometimes when that happens so we're gonna add my herbs in and it's just gonna add flavor yes I don't measure that is about a teaspoon and a half of thyme and then all of these are organic and I buy them in bulk that's flat leaf parsley adds lots of potassium and it's just super good for you that's gonna be more like a couple of teaspoons. Adding that in. And the last one we're going to put in our mortar and pestle. And the cheapest way for me to buy rosemary, that's gonna be about a teaspoon. Once I crush it down, it's gonna look more like a half a teaspoon. But the cheapest way to buy organic rosemary is whole leaf. So all I'm gonna do is grind that baby down. And we're not making it into a powder. We're just kind of crushing, because it's it's woody, but it is delicious. And I love it in chicken soup. I love it in a lot of things. And rosemary is super good for you. And we can add a little pinch of salt, just to get the last little bits, because it'll just add as a grinding medium. Yeah, it's getting those last little stubborn pieces. And then none of that will stand out in your soup. It's just gonna taste great. And we're just gonna dump that in. And this baby is heavy. When you get done with this, you feel like you've done a workout. We've got celery cooking here and some clean water with most of the herbs that I'm gonna use. And I'll let you take a look. It looks really good. It's only been simmering um, for about two or three minutes. And we're gonna keep it on a low simmer while we prep the rest of our veg. And the rest of our veg, we're going to saute. But this is just gonna simmer, maybe a little bit higher, until it's tender. So we'll check to make sure it's tender before we add anything else in there. So now we're gonna move back to the chopping block and we're gonna prep some sweet onions and some garlic. We are back at the chopping block and we're going to finish prepping the rest of our veg. I'm gonna go ahead and gather up um, the veg that we've already prepped. These are the veggie scraps that you'll hear me speak of often if you watch any video where I am teaching you how to cook. This is free flavor and nutrition that's going to go into your bone broth. So please take a peek at our bone broth video of how to make chicken bone broth and you'll understand why we're doing this. So we're going to freeze those off, save them, and when we get ready to make a pot of bone broth, we're going to add all those scraps in and it's going to add lots of flavor. All right, so we are going to get our onions prepped. These are also going to go into your bag all of the peelings and when you run it through a fine sieve a fine colander and this is how I learned how to peel onions so you take the ends off first there's your scraps make sure you take all of these little stubborn pieces off they add lots of flavor but they do not cook down so you do not want that in your soup so don't accidentally get a little piece of that in all of those are going to go in your bag too so these are prepped Let's do these two, this one here. Get these two ends off and cut it in half. Take that last little peeling off. Okay, so everything is ready. Then I'm just going to, and again, a sharp knife is super important with this. And you're going to 
want to um, keep your fingers back. We do not want fingers in our soup or accidents. And I do still cut my finger occasionally. It's usually when I'm hurrying or I've got a dull knife. So you're just making some slices. You can follow the little ridges there. Does that make sense? But do not go all the way to the end because this is gonna hold it all together for you. So when you're at the very end, it is super nice that it's all still attached. And sweet onions don't typically make you kind of weepy or where they make your eyes burn, but if you are sensitive to onions, there's one of those little specks I'm trying to get off. Um, if you are sensitive to onions making your eyes water, then put your onion in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes. Don't freeze it solid, and it will help with that. And we're doing a pretty fine mince fine chop, whatever you want to call it. A mince would be like super microscopic, so this is more of a fine chop. Then I lay it on its side, and we chop, again, just like we were before, but it's on its side. And you want all of your pieces even. So if you've got big pieces of onion mixed in with little pieces of onion, then some of your onions get cooked and the other ones stay kind of crunchy, which is not very tasty. And I'm gonna make this dish dairy-free, gluten-free, um, and I'm gonna do a variation to make it keto friendly. We are gonna now prep our garlic. So this is some organic garlic that I purchased at one of my favorite stores. No, they do not get anything from us talking about it. This is from Trader Joe's and super cheap. And I can tell you exactly how much. All right, we're gonna prep um, about four big cloves, but I normally do a ton more. So you take a whole head and you push it down and there you go. Look at there. And guess what? All of those little peelings are gonna go into your scrap bag right there that's gonna go into your freezer and wait for your next batch of bone broth. So I'm gonna get the four biggest ones. All right, put the rest over here. All right, there we go. All those peelings, you want those off. You do not want that in your soup. All right, so your biggest one, let's see, here we go. Pushing on it, you push on it with a knife. We just crush that with our knife and that makes the peeling just super easy come right off. Now, I use a microplane, um, but I wanna show you how to chop up garlic. And you pretty much do it the same way you do onion. If you have not crushed your clove too small. And then we're just gonna mince that baby up really small. And you really could use a smaller knife, but this is the knife I had out, so this is the one we're gonna use. Here we go. And I guess I should really pull out my microplane to show you how to use that too. And if you don't have a microplane, but you have a box grater on your box grater, there is a very coarse cheese setting. And then the other side is a fine cheese setting. And that's basically a microplane. So garlic, um, just one little thought while I'm chopping, is easy to burn. So you do not put garlic in a really hot pan. So when our onions are almost done, we will add our garlic in. So that's why we're getting those ready at the same time. And we will just take them over to the stove together. And honestly, in real life, I would have the onions cooking right now while I'm prepping the garlic, but just trying to make this make sense for a home cook or somebody who's wanting to try something new. All right, so I'm gonna chop these last two up and then we're gonna head over to the stove. Veggie scraps. Here's our bag. Has the celery, all the scraps in there. These are the onion pieces. We're putting those in and the garlic. This is gonna go in my freezer as soon as I get ready to clean up. And that will be ready for our next batch of bone broth. Hey there, free flavor, free nutrition. We'll put that over here. All right, now what we are going to do right now is we are going to get some oil in our pan and turn our pan on to high. And I did have it on, so it, it might smoke just a little. Let's see. Yay, it calmed down. It was waiting on us for technical difficulties. So that's about two tablespoons of extra virgin organic olive oil. And we're keeping this dairy-free for those who have dairy-free issues and it's naturally gluten-free. So it's gonna smoke just a little and splatter. Here's all our lovely onions going in. And using our same spoon, You want to get them all flat and even. You turn my panel. My my house leans a little. <laughs> so you just learn how your kitchen is, and you just turn it. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more oil. 
And you need fat to get color. And brown food tastes good. So there we go. Um, I'm going to add some pepper. Total is going to be about a half a teaspoon because my husband does not like a lot of pepper. Here's our celery coming along right here. I'm going to add a little pepper in there. We we'll season in layers. And we're not going to move this a lot. We want to get some caramelization. And these are sweet onions. You do not want to add your salt. This is just some Himalayan pink salt. You don't want to add your salt initially because it will tell your onion to release its oil, release its water, and then that will deglaze the pan. We do not want to deglaze the pan right now. We want color. So we're going to be patient. We're not going to stir these onions up. And we're just going to let it get rolling. Garlic will go in at the end because we do not want it to burn. So we're just going to let that simmer for a bit. And as that is simmering, I'm going to talk you through what we did earlier today with our rice. So this is two cups of organic white rice. Um, the reason we use white rice in our family is because for years I use brown rice because it's healthy but it would always give us indigestion. And then I got turned on to the Healthy Home Economist. She's an amazing holistic traditional chef. And she's the one that turned me on to using just white rice. There's really not a lot of nutrition in rice, but we all enjoy it. So um, I actually soaked it. It's been soaking all day because you really want to soak your grains. I put a little splash of apple cider vinegar in there. Um, but I also want to mention too that we're going to do a variation. I'm going to grab that right over here. And I'm not going to actually cook it all the way. I'm just going to tell you how to do it. So if you want this to be a completely keto soup, which means, you know, where you're not doing it. Okay, let me check on our onions. They're starting to get that smell of color. So I'm going to let you look at that up close. See the caramelization? That means the sugar in there is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So we're just going to shimmy that around. We're going to add salt soon. All right, we're going to get it all smoothed back out again. And while it's doing this last little bit, in about another minute, I'm going to turn it down just slightly so it doesn't go too carried away while I finish talking to you about the rice. So the rice has been soaking. It's not going to take as long to cook. It is more digestible if you soak it. It only needs to be soaked for a few hours. I often will soak it overnight. Occasionally I'll do fermented just because it's definitely more digestible, but it's not necessary. So here's our soaked rice that I'm going to strain off in a moment, and then we're going to add that into our soup pot. The other thing I was telling you about is this lovely little product. Yes, Trader Joe's. <laughs> All it is is rice cauliflower. I'm going to stir my onions because they are asking for it. There we go. All right, so I'm going to actually turn this. My onions are just about there. And this is gonna add so much flavor by doing that extra step of just getting that caramelization. So I'm making a little spot right here. I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of oil. And here is my lovely minced garlic. There's my spoon. I'm gonna drop that in right there in that spot. So I know it has contact. It takes about a couple minutes for garlic to get cooked through. And then it's just going to get mixed in all the way with the onions. And then all of that's going to go into our soup pot. All right, so that's cooking. So back to the cauliflower rice. So this has very little carbs. It has um, about three cups of cauliflower rice. Um, and it's only four grams of carb per serving. So that's about 12 carbs. <laughs> we don't even want to talk about how many carbs are in rice but um, I actually do both. I'll do for my family, when I make casseroles or when I make soup, I'll do half and half. Tonight, I'm actually doing it all with rice because I'm gonna take some to my neighbor across the street who's 82 years old and she needs to put a little weight on. So we're doing all rice tonight. But all you would do is just add this into your soup pot towards the end. This is only gonna take about five minutes to cook. It will take up the flavor of whatever's in there. It will not taste like cauliflower, I promise you. My husband, who is incredibly picky, can attest that as I have snuck this in and then asked him what he thought about the meal, he was like, it was amazing. And then I told him what I did. And he said, you can do that anytime because it tastes great. All right, back to our onions. 
because we truly do not want that to burn. We're stirring our garlic in because our garlic is done. And the smell in here is ripping amazing. People think you can cook if you can cook onions and garlic because your whole house smells heavenly. And our celery is looking like it is just about tender over there. I will check one of the bigger pieces just to be sure. All right, I'm going to turn this totally off. And what I'm going to do to deglaze this pan is I'm going to add about a uh, half a teaspoon of salt. And that's going to get some of the liquids coming out of the onions. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour in. This is the first batch. So when you watch our bone broth video, and this has been sitting out, so it's probably not as gelatinous because my kitchen is super hot. Then I'm going to pour it in. And it's actually normally, like it, it was chunky earlier, like lump, lump, lump. But my kitchen is hot. So I just wanted you to, I guess, see the loveliness. It's beautiful. But I took it out of my fridge about, I don't know, 45 minutes ago. Probably should have left it in. So you could have seen the love. But we're going to pour in about a half of that and deglaze our pan. All right. So all the color at the bottom of that pan is flavor. And you want to take your spoon and lovingly get all that goodness off. I turned the stove off because the pan was super hot. And as you can see, the broth was pretty dark, but it was not that dark. So it's pulling up all that flavor. This is actually pretty close to making French onion soup. You would just let your onions go a little bit longer. Um, and you could use beef broth. You don't have to. You can use chicken. As you can see, you're getting lots of color. Now this is going to get added into this pot. So I'm going to do that carefully. And this pot is almost 30 years old. So minus, so ignore the... The little marks on there that's just from love need to get some steel wool to get that off all right so there is all that lovely goodness in there i'm going to take a look at that but it is delicious now we're going to turn that on high bring it up to a really good simmer and we are going to put in our rice I'm going to just pour off our rice right here and just pour this was clean water so I'm pouring all that off and I am going to rinse it with water that is from the faucet because it's convenient all right there we go so that is two two cups of rice which is what I typically put in a big monster pot of bone broth soup and we're going to add that in. That is not going to take long to cook because it has been soaking all day. I'm going to add a little more liquid in because rice is thirsty and you don't really want to cook it. You don't want to cook it till the rice is falling apart. You want to cook it till the rice is tender. So that is going in. We are not going to cook that on high. Just once that comes to a simmer, I'm going to turn that down to low because I do not want to damage the lovely collagen that we are after with our soup. And we're going to put the lid on that just to help it get going. And again, what you would do to make this keto is you would add this in instead of the rice. All right, so we're done with this. What we need to do now, we're going to come over to the sink. And this is the bone broth that's been going for 24 hours. It's actually in the warming mode, so it's gone more like 25 hours. So I'm going to take that off. Bring this baby over. I guess we can do it the same. I think we can do it right here. All right. Let me let you have a look at it. So that is about 15 drumsticks. There's our whole head of garlic that is now garlic paste that I put in this morning. So that's only been in there for a few hours. So, and I showed you on our bone broth video how to harness that one. We'll do that in a little bit and add that in. And this is just gonna go through a fine strain and it's gonna pull all these veggie scraps out. And if you cook this a little bit longer, then this could actually be um, some bone meal that you can give to your animals. 
You could actually probably put it in your garden at this point, but I, I would cook it longer. Just to add nutrients to your garden. All right, so here is the goodness. So that is the second cooking of the bones. So the bones now have been cooked for the first six hours, six or seven, and we got the first two quarts. This is about two more quarts. So we have a full gallon of bone broth that is going into this one pot of soup. So now I wanna show you, let me move things around a little bit so we've got room to work. So last night when the chicken was done, oh yeah, that's nice and gelatinous. These are two drumsticks that I pulled off because I want to show you how to, let's get a cutting board, pardon me, prep your chicken. Hopefully that's not hot anymore. Yep, there we go. So here's your chicken. And this is what I did. I broke it all apart. We take the ends off, which is where the, uh, the joints are. And then there's your meat. There's little bones in here, so just fish around. It depends upon how big the chicken was and how big the drumstick is. I've found <laughs> more than you would think sometimes and sometimes less. So just fish around. You want to get all the little bones out and keep all your chicken. And then these would be bones that I would just put back in the freezer to go. I'm going to put it right here for now. So this is all going to go into our soup. All right, our broth is going really great with our rice. I'm going to stir it just a little. Yeah, the rice is definitely about halfway there. I'm going to turn that down just a little so we don't overcook it. And then the, here is our other drumstick. And you're just going to keep the skin. And this is not hot. This has been in the fridge. And there's a little, you can see the gelatin here. See? That was just some of the broth that was with the chicken. And this is all the chicken we're keeping. And brown um, chicken brown meat chicken, sorry, um, is great in soups because it does not dry out. So there's all that. That's going to go in. And then this is the remainder. And there's more of our gelatin sticking in there. I always put a little broth in. And I don't actually do a lot of cutting. I just break it apart. And I'm not going to put all of that in because we don't like a ton of meat in our soup. So probably about half of that. And then the other half we'll use for another meal. So half of this is going to go in here once it's done. All of that broth is going to go in. And that little bit of gelatin. Let's put our chicken here. And that is all going to go in. And that rice is pretty close. So we're going to add our chicken in soon. And that will actually cool it down a bit. So there, this is just all the 15 drumsticks. And lots of collagen all around it and gelatin. I think it's about half. The men folk in my house do not mind having extra chicken, let me tell you. But if I can make two meals out of something, I'm totally going to do it. All right, and I'm just breaking up the bigger pieces. When you, when you have soup and you put meat in, if you make your pieces super small, it just kind of all disappears. I think it's kind of a treat when you get a bowl of soup, especially chicken and rice soup, and you got a nice hunk of chicken in there. All right, so that is all pretty much broken up. And yeah, I mean, you can totally do it on a cutting board. Um, this particular, like if you're doing a chicken breast or maybe even a thigh, you would totally have to chop it. But this is just breaking up nicely. Yep, everything's ready. And I'm going to rinse my hands real quickly. Well, we're going to finish up this lovely pot of soup. And I promise you, your family is going to give you a kiss when you cook this for them. It is delicious. So I already added a little bit of salt earlier. But we're going to add another full teaspoon right into the rice. And rice is pretty like, hello, I want your salt. <laughs> Potatoes are the same way. So it will grab that flavor. So you want to definitely cook it. I've got the lid off because the rice is just about there. And we're going to add everything else in when I want the rice to stop cooking because I don't like my rice to be overcooked. So here we are. I'm going to let you take a peek and see where it is. But it's almost absorbed all that liquid. The celery is fork tender. The smell is amazing in this kitchen. All right, so we are going to add the last of the collagen from the first batch. And this is when I cooked my chicken. Yeah, this one's a lot more lumpy. <laughs> Plump. There we go. Isn't that pretty? I think it's pretty. It makes me happy. Plump. Ooh, a little splatter action. Stirring that in. Get it all the way up. 
Oh yeah, nice and loose. All right, now we're gonna add our chicken. And that's half of my chicken that I cooked to make this batch of bone broth. So I had 15 drumsticks, and this is, you know, roughly half of those. That's going in. Now you can see the happiness, it's all coming together. Now, that rice is gonna take up another good several cups of that water as it sits. And even tomorrow, it will be a pretty thirsty soup still, but we're gonna eat most of it tonight. I'm gonna take some over to Miss Betty. She's precious and she loves my cooking, which is super thoughtful of her, she's sweet. All right, now this is the bone broth that was cooking for 24 hours. It is not looking very gelatinous right now because it is hot. We're gonna pour in probably two thirds of that. And then I will save back a little bit for tomorrow because tomorrow the soup is gonna want a little more liquid. And that is totally done. I need to get a ladle and put some in a bowl. But what I should do first is get a soup spoon and taste the broth and make sure our salt is just right. This is a soup spoon from my grandfather's house, pup up. And he made soup and that is where I got my love for homemade bone broth soup. Wow, it's perfect already. I thought I would have to add a little bit more salt, but that is literally perfect. So it needs no more salt. I'm gonna save that little bit of liquid left here for tomorrow. And if it doesn't need it, then I will just drink that tomorrow and it will be delicious. Now, um, you can also, I'm gonna turn this off. It's time to put this in the bowl and have a taste. Now you gotta have plenty of broth because that's the love right there. And my husband's probably gonna be the first one to eat this, so let me get him a few hunks of chicken. That makes him feel loved. There we go. So that is it, folks. That is a bone broth soup. And my family's favorite right now. And if you want to make that a cream of chicken and rice soup, all you do is add about a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. If you are dairy free, then you would just, you could make some nut milk, but you could just buy some nut milk and put that in um, and just cream it up. And I mean, you don't have to do anything to thicken it. There's no need to thicken it because the rice is gonna be in there a little bit longer and it's gonna thicken this up a bit more. But obviously the feature of this soup is the lovely broth. So we don't wanna make it too thick and you're not getting all the benefits of the broth because you don't have as much in there. So we have literally a gallon of bone broth soup in this soup and it is, incredibly nourishing for your family, incredibly healing for your gut, and keto friendly by making a few variations. So thank you for coming into my kitchen, and thank you for joining us on our journey to Goshen. Please hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can find out when we've got new videos out. And please leave us a comment. I'll do my best to answer them. I've tried my very best all this months, and thank you for everybody that's been talking to us from all over the world. But we bless you, we bless your body with vibrancy and health, and please enjoy our soup. God bless you.